Good morning everyone. Today we will discuss about development of hindgut. First of all, what are the derivatives of hindgut? This hindgut starts from the left one third of the transverse colon, then descending colon, sigmoid colon, rectum, upper part of the anal canal up to the pectinate line. This is the part of hindgut and this hindgut also gave rise to epithelium of the urinary bladder and urethra because it is developing from urogenital sinus and this urogenital sinus is developing from the cloaca and this cloaca is a part of hindgut. What is the artery of hindgut? Inferior mesenteric artery. In this diagram we can see that uh, this hindgut is starting from posterior intestinal portal which is junction of midgut and hindgut and it is extending up to the upper two third of the anal canal or we can say up to the pectinate line. Now from the hindgut a diverticulum is arising which is called as allantois diverticulum or the allantois. Here is the allantois diverticulum or allantois and it is extending into the connecting stalk. This greenish part is the connecting stalk. So this allantois is growing into the uh, connecting stalk and this allantois give rise to development of umbilical blood vessels. Now the how the uh, anal canal develops? First of all uh, what is cloaca? This is the hindgut and from the hindgut in towards the ventral part or in the connecting stalk this is connecting stalk. So, from the hindgut on a ventral side a diverticulum is arising which is called as allantois. Now part of the hindgut which is caudal to allantois it is called as cloaca. So what is cloaca? It is terminal part of the hindgut or dilated part of the hindgut caudal to allantois. So this is allantois and caudal to allantois part of the hindgut it is called as cloaca. Now, <coughs> now this cloaca is divided into two parts by a septum that is called as urorectal septum. Here you can see this is urorectal septum, this greenish one. And this urorectal septum is growing in between allantois and hindgut. So urorectal septum is growing between allantois and diverticulum and it is growing downwards towards the cloacal membrane. This one is cloacal membrane. So, this uh, urorectal septum is growing downwards towards the cloacal membrane and it is dividing the cloacal membrane <coughs> into two parts. Anterior part is called as urogenital membrane and posterior part is called as anal membrane. So, by the growing urorectal septum, this cloacal membrane has been divided into anterior urogenital membrane and posterior anal membrane and it also divides the cloaca into two parts. Anterior one is the urogenitals, primitive urogenital sinus. This is anterior part of the cloaca which is called as primitive urogenital sinus. And this primitive urogenital sinus, this one, it is continuous with the allantois. Okay. So, this is the anterior part of the cloaca and posteriorly it is uh, called as primitive rectum. This primitive rectum the name is suggesting it uh, will give rise to uh, rectum and also the upper two third of the anal canal it is arising from the primitive rectum. And this primitive urogenital sinus the name is suggesting it will give rise to development of uh, epithelium of the urinary bladder and urethra. Both are developing from the primitive urogenital sinus. And the site of fusion where the cloacal mem uh, mem the site of fusion of uh, urorectal septum and cloacal membrane here this is the urorectal septum and this is cloacal membranes so, so this site of fusion is called as perineal body in adult it is uh, represented by perineal body in adults now cloaca as we have discussed it is terminal dilated part of the hindgut distal to allantois. So, this is cloaca and here the, this is the urorectal septum which is uh, has been divided uh, which is dividing the cloaca into anterior urogenital uh, part 
uh, or urogenital sinus and cranial part of the urogenital sinus is giving rise to give rise to urinary bladder and from the caudal part urethra is developing and uh, the part posterior to the urorectal septum this yellow one is the primitive rectum or also known as anorectal canal and this anorectal canal will uh, give development to terminal part uh, uh, sorry upper two third of the anal canal and rectum. So, cloacal membrane has been divided into two parts and cloaca also has been divided into two parts and junction of urorectal septum and uh, cloacal membrane is uh, perineal body. Now, the mesonephric ducts are opening into the cloaca. Now, if we come to the development of anal canal, it is developing from two sources. Upper two third part is developing from the hind gut and lower one third part is developing from the proctodium. Upper two third part which is developing from the hind gut because hind gut is endodermal. So, this upper two third of the anal canal is endodermal and lower one third of the anal canal which is developing from the proctodium or the anal pit it is ectodermal. So, upper two third of the anal canal is endodermal and lower one third of the anal canal is ectodermal. Upper two third is developing from hind gut and lower one third is developing from the proctodium or the anal pit. And the site of junction, junction of uh, these two part is called as anal membrane which is in adults uh, represented by pectinate line. So, junction of upper two third and lower one third the anal canal in adults it is represented by pectinate line and during embryonic life it is represented by anal membrane. So, what are the differences between upper uh, half of the upper two third of the anal canal or the lower part of the anal canal? Developmental defect uh, de difference uh, developmental difference is there one is the primitive uh, upper part is developing from the primitive rectum which is endodermal and lower half is from the proctodium which is ectodermal. Blood supply of the upper half of the anal canal is superior rectal artery which is continuation of the superior mesenteric artery and superior mesenteric artery is the artery of hind uh, sorry inferior mesenteric artery which is artery of hind gut and uh, lower part of the anal canal is developing from the uh, it is uh, supplied by inferior rectal artery which is a branch of internal pudendal artery and which is uh, a branch of internal iliac artery. Venous drainage it drains the uh, upper part drain into superior rectal vein and which drains into inferior mesenteric vein and inferior mesenteric vein is part of portal system and lower part drains into inferior rectal vein which finally drain into uh, internal pudendal and finally into internal iliac vein and internal iliac vein is a systemic vein. So, junction of upper two third and uh, uh, lower one third of the anal canal it uh, which is represented by pectinate line it act as a water shade line above the line the venous drainage and lymphatic drainage is different and below the uh, that watershed line the lymphatic and venous drainage is different. And lymphatic drainage of the upper half part of the anal canal is into the inferior mesentery group of lymph node and lower part of the anal canal this drains into the uh, superficial inguinal group of lymph node. Nerve supply of the upper part of the anal canal is autonomic and lower part of the anal canal is somatic. That is why the somatic uh, because of somatic supply of the lower part of the anal canal this is uh, sensitive to pain touch and temperature. And one thing which is important that uh, because the uh, upper part of anal canal having portals uh, draining into portal system and lower part is draining into systemic system. So, this pectinate line uh, or the anal canal is the site of portocaval anastomosis. Now, coming to the congenital anomalies of the hind gut, first is the congenital megaclon or, her the, or the Hirschsprung disease. It is also uh, called as a ganglionic megaclon. In this condition, there will be absence of parasympathetic ganglia in the uh, in rectum or the terminal part of the sigmoid colon because these ganglia are coming from the neural crest. So, if uh, there is failure of the neural crest cells to migrate into the wall of bo bowel, especially into the rectum or sigmoid colon, uh, the part will be remain uh, will, uh, that part will be 
narrow or constricted segment will be there as you can see in this diagram this is a ganglionic constricted uh, constricted segment and most commonly involving rectum and sigmoid colon and uh, because of uh, this uh, 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 part the proximal par part proximal to it will be grossly dilated and because of constricted part there will be uh, constipation uh, to, uh, to the baby or uh, an unable it baby will be unable to pass the meconium and, and if the per rectal examination in, is done then gush of fecal material will come out ok. In this second diagram this is the barium enema in which you can see the a ganglionic segment or the constricted in uh, a ganglionic segment of the congenital megacolon. Now coming to the second anomaly that is the fistula. As we know that the urorectal septum which here will uh, be the urorectal septum which is dividing the uh, the bladder anteriorly, a uh, urogenital part anteriorly and the anal part posteriorly. In females <coughs> this urorectal, uh, if the urorectal septum uh, does not grow uh, properly then it will lead to development of fistula. So, first is in females rectovaginal fistula. In this, uh, the part of the rectum or anal canal is communicated with the vagina. So, that is called as rectovaginal fistula. Then, in males, uh, the rectovesical fistula, in which the name is suggesting the up, uh, rectum is connected with the urinary bladder. And if the rectum is connected with the urethra, then it is called as rectourethral fistula. And how it will manifest? The baby will come out uh, uh, or the newborn will uh, uh, the uh, having the meconium or the fecal material at the vestibule of vagina here because the fecal material will come uh, out through the vestibule of vagina here and uh, in the in case of in case of female this will uh, will be there and in case of male in both condition rectovesical and rectourethral fistula the fecal material will be seen at the urethral opening. So, if the fecal material is seen at the urethral opening then it is uh, in male it is diagnosis of rectovesical or rectourethral fistula and in females it is uh, presenting with anal uh, at the vestibule of vagina uh, or at vaginal opening you can uh, you will be uh, you can see the meconium or the fecal material at vestibule of vagina. So, this diagram is showing different anomalies of the rectum and anal canal. First is the persistent anal membrane. So, here the persistent anal membrane is there. So, there will be no external opening. Now, in the second part that is the rectal atresia. In the terminal part of the anal canal, there uh, this part is atratic or there will be failure of recanalization of the anal canal that will lead to anal atresia. Third is showing the anoperineal fistula. In this condition, the anal canal is opening uh, at the perineal region. And the fourth one is the rectum is opening into the vagina, that is the rectovaginal fistula. And the fifth, e, uh, in this diagram, the rectum is opening into urethra. And in the last one, this rectum is opening into the urinary bladder. So, it is called as rectovagical fistula. So, these are the anomalies and this diagram you can see the anal atresia. In this condition, this condition may be uh, due to at, uh, failure of recanalization of the anal canal or uh, also due to failure of rupture of anal membrane. So, there will be no anal opening at uh, you can uh, on the external surface. So, in this condition failure of anal membrane to rupture or it is due to abnormal recanalization of the colon. Now, one condition that is in perforate anus, it is due to failure of rupture of anal membrane to uh, establish communication of the anal canal to outside or maybe due to re failure of recanalization of the lower part of the anal canal. So, this is the persisting anal membrane at external opening. So, there will be so, uh, so the external surface. So, there will be no external opening. Now, the second diagram is uh, failure of anal pit to develop in this condition. So, solid mass of ectodermal cells will be there, but uh, atratic 
terminal part of the anal canal is there and failure of anal pit to develop from this mass and then third condition upper and lower part of the anal canal they are separated because of failure of recanalization of this part or uh, maybe fibrosed uh, middle segment. So, there will be gap in between the upper and lower part of the anal canal and the fourth one is the anal stenosis or the narrowing of the anal canal due to extreme posterior deviation of the urorectal septum. So, if the urorectal septum is deviated posteriorly it will lead to stenosis or narrowing of the anal canal. So, that is all about devel uh, and development of anal canal and hindgut. So, you have to remember that hindgut uh, is giving rise to development of uh, from uh, left one third of the transverse colon up to the upper two third of the anal canal up to pectinate line and it is also giving rise to uh, epithelium of the urinary bladder and urethra and anal membrane is a junction of upper two third of the anal canal and lower one third of the anal canal and it is representing the pectinate line in adults. So, anal membrane is equal to pectinate line and the site of fusion of urorectal septum and cloacal membrane it is represented by perineal body in adults. So, that is all about hindgut. Thank you.